as we begin to pray I will rebuke the spirit of poverty the spirit of poverty is a spirit that is assigned to individuals the assignment watch this the assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the extent of your ignorance and to build systems around your ignorance that stop you from making financial progress let me repeat the assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the level of your ignorance the bible says no weapon fashioned against us weapons are fashioned are we together so when the devil comes sending the spirit of poverty he does not just attack because poverty like prosperity is is an effect it's not a cause so it doesn't make sense to say Satan stop finances to come to you. It's a, ref it's a reaction. What he does is to study your whole financial understanding or otherwise. And he now begins to build systems either through pride or through laziness. Are we together? Or stopping you from having strategic relationships. Everything that can be designed to stop you from accessing the keys that bring you out that is the assignment of the spirit of poverty it now becomes a stronghold upon your mind and upon your destiny making the word of god of non-effect so when you are bringing deliverance to an individual preaching deliverance what you are doing is opening their eyes to see but that influence is still there this is where the assignment of the power of god comes to dislodge that spirit influence this is what you call generational causes this is what you call familiar spirits they and you know because listen spirits don't die so you can think that because your father is 70 80 or you are 40 30 20 those spirits do not feel the effect of the longevity of time they stay there and they remain until a savior arises i repeat until a savior arises not until time passes and could it be that you are that savior whilst you are listening to me thank god that you still have a chance to make this right and for some of you who are fortunate to still have your loved ones god is giving you an opportunity right now that you can correct a lot of things there are many of you who have never supported the cause of the kingdom with your finances not because you do not want to it is not even there there are many pastors today burdened with all kinds of financial yokes the discussion largely is money, not giving you room to serve God with the dignity of integrity. Hallelujah. Statistics tell us that the top three reasons why divorce happens in marriage is number one, financial issues. Are we together? Number two, issues between spouse and then number three, external factors. Statistic tells us that these are the top three reasons. Number one, money and financial issues. And don't say it does not matter. There are people right now who have not received their salaries for a few months. And their children are back home. When others are going to school, they will not go. The fact that those children cannot make progress already begins to plant complex in them ready tools for the spirit of poverty to come he will now start suggesting lifestyles and suggesting all kinds of things are we together there are some of us right now when you started your walk with god you chose the path of integrity and character and right now you look back and and, and you are not even happy about what is happening because your hands have been mad in all kinds of wrong things all credited to the absence of finance but we are going to pray the Lord has brought us this word and it's time for you to be free. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. This is my assignment and I will do it with diligence. I will pray, I will speak over your life and see to it that no weapon fashioned against you. It is not the economy that controls your resources. It is your understanding. It is these forces at work in you. Ladies and gentlemen, government will come and go. The great recession once happened in the globe. Every kind of, there are circles of recession that will always happen. You will always find corrupt leaders. You will find honest leaders. You will find godly leaders. You will find satanic leaders interchange hands through the years. Believing that a government will magically come and make you prosperous is being ignorant. Your prosperity is defined by the sum total 
of your understanding. Are we together? Daniel was a, a believer in the God of heaven who reigned through the dispensation about, of about four to seven kings. Bible history tells us none of those kings could take him out of relevance because he found the key. He was not there to look for money, yet he never lacked. Regardless the government, he was still prosperous. Hallelujah. Give your destiny a chance to be blessed. And let me wrap up by saying this. The purpose of financial blessings like I have taught you, money has a threefold assignment in the life of the believer. Number one, financial resources empower you to live a comfortable life. Never forget that. You will never live a comfortable life in poverty. And by the way, poverty does not glorify God. The Bible says, if you have been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? God will not use poverty and twist your hand and curse your children to teach you a lesson there are more superior ways to guide you and teach you a lesson and build you and train you are we together now number two the second assignment of wealth prosperity and abundance listen carefully is for kingdom advance so that you can make your contribution as far as supplying financial resources for kingdom activities is concerned the work of the Lord does not just depend on anointing and grace and doctrine. It depends on the availability of financial resources communicated from and through willing hearts who are prosperous. That means the more people prosper genuinely, the more resources can be made available for, financial, for, for kingdom activities. And then number three, the last purpose of wealth and re financial resources is to empower you so that you can be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Listen carefully. Remember that you are not just empowered just for Christians alone. There are many people dying out there. There is a world that needs to see an extension of the love of Jesus beyond prejudices of religion and all of that. And financial prosperity empowers you to be a blessing. Unfortunately, unbelievers are doing this by far better than believers. By far better than believers. You look at the ratio of charity organizations constructively e em empowering the poor, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. What Jesus said, if you do it, is called pure religion. Those who have not professed Jesus are the ones doing it by far better than believers. And we have a role to play as far as making our contribution is concerned. This is the threefold purpose of wealth for a believer. Anything outside this, you are pushing yourself to the corridors of waste, regret, and compromise.